I love using the orchestra as an analogy for a trunk radio system. I think this really does a great way of painting a mental picture. The control channel is the conductor, and he stands in front of the orchestra, right? And an orchestra is made up of different sections. You can have woodwind, you can have brass, you can have strings, you can have percussion, right? And think about all of these different groups of an orchestra as talk groups. The orchestra is our trunk radio system. I still remember very vividly the first time I went to program in a trunked system. It was in my Radio Shack Pro 95 over 20 years ago. And I remember being a little bit confused on how to set it up and just how to get it in the radio. But once I unlocked the world of trunked scanning, I was amazed out of all the conversations and transmissions and activity that I was missing when I wasn't listening to the trunk scanner and only listening to conventional. Don't let that happen to you. Trunked scanning doesn't need to be confusing. By the end of this episode, you are gonna be an expert on the basics of trunked scanning. But not only are we gonna explain in this video how trunked scanning works, but we're also gonna explain why we use it. Because again, if we're gonna be forced to program our scanner radios to listen to a trunk radio system, there's gotta be a reason why all of these agencies and counties and parishes and government agencies and states and everything else are moving over to a trunk radio system. Let's figure that one out as well. So let's back things up and let's understand things from a conventional point of view. Let's imagine to start, we have five frequencies. And just to keep things simple and to get the ball rolling here, these are five conventional frequencies. We've got police tack, police dispatch, fire tech, fire dispatch, and let's throw in EMS dispatch in here as well. And out of these five frequencies, the police dispatch is going to be the busiest, right? They're constantly going to be dispatching out police units and hearing back from the, the officers in the field constantly, all day long. This frequency is booming, busy, et cetera, et cetera. However, on the flip side of things, the fire tactical channel is probably very rarely used. Most likely, it's only going to be used if there is a working fire or if there is something major going on that they want to keep the dispatch frequency empty, quiet, available for dispatches only. For most part, a, the fire department is only going to be operating on their dispatch channel. And even then, that dispatch channel is only going to be used when there's an active call for the fire department. And for the couple of minutes or hour or two after that call is dispatched for them to work that assignment. And of course, that EMS dispatch channel could be pretty busy or it could be quiet on the overnight hours. You know, you never know. But again, let's not leave out our EMS people. So as you can see, we have five different frequencies with five different uses. And the trick to remember here is that these frequencies are owned. They're licensed by the entity that owns them basically. So the fire department is licensed for two frequencies by the FCC here in the United States. The police department is licensed for two frequencies. EMS is licensed for one. And because they're licensed for these frequencies, nobody else can occupy these frequencies in the geographical area that the FCC has allocated them to use these frequencies. So again, uh, it all depends on the geographical area. And the FCC will also tell the agency who applied for the license how much power they can put out. And also it will be licensed to how many units are in the field. So again, over this umbrella of a geographical area, nobody else can use that frequency. It cannot be reassigned or re-licensed to somebody else. And why is this a problem? This is a problem because we only have a finite number of available frequencies in the RF spectrum. And it gets even worse than that. The frequencies are broken down in blocks. And what that means is here in the United States, 450 to 470 is the UHF block that has been set aside for public service, public safety, and also businesses as well. Now, in some busier areas or some metropolitan markets like where I am here in New York City, we can also use the T band. And what that basically means is that the FCC is allowing public safety to license frequencies 
in the UHF TV band, hence UHF T. And those frequencies go from 470 to 512. And again, I believe there's about a dozen markets where the UHF T band is licensed. Again, sitting on frequencies in a very heavily populated area with a lot of agencies that want to have a licensed frequency for themselves. Yeah, sitting on a dormant frequency isn't really the neighborly thing to do. But again, departments do that because they have deep pockets and they say, well, you know what? If somebody else, you know, let their license lapse, I'm going to snatch it up now because I might need it in the future. And then you get this hoarding situation and it pretty much snowballs out of control a little bit here. So now that we understand why it's really not such a great use of our RF resources to assign five frequencies that aren't going to be used at all times, let's take these same five frequencies and convert them over to a trunk system. And let's see what happens here. And also just as a quick side note, we're looking at this from a 30,000 foot view. We're going to look at the basics of the trunk radio system here to give you a general understanding of how a trunk system works. And then the next installment of the Scanner Radio University series, we're gonna talk about more trunk radio systems and how they differ and how they would program into your scanner radio. So make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel or podcast so you know when the next video drops. So again, we've got five frequencies and in our world we have police dispatch, police TAC, fire dispatch, fire TAC, and EMS. We have five frequencies in our pool of resources that we can assign to this trunked radio system that we're making up here. Now, in order for a trunked radio system to work, we need a control channel. That control channel is going to be on 24 seven broadcasting data for all of the users that are gonna use it. So now, of those five frequencies, one of them is now dedicated to a control channel. That means the remaining four frequencies are available for voice. But wait a second, we've got five frequencies we started off with here that were in use. Now you tell me we only have four? Yes, I'm gonna show you how this works. So now let's assign talk groups on this system so that the users that used to have their own frequencies can use this trunk system with talk groups. So let's keep things organized. We're gonna break things down into blocks here. So talk group one will be police dispatch. Talk group two will be police tack. Talk group 11 will be fire dispatch and talk group 12 will be fire tack. Talk group 21 will be EMS dispatch. And hey, let's make things interesting. Let's make 22 EMS TAC. Well, now we've got six talk groups on this system. We only usually have five frequencies. Yeah, we're stacking things up. We're gonna show you how this all works. Now, this is where the magic happens and makes trunk radio systems really, really interesting. But before we explain why, I just wanna take a second here to thank my Patreon supporters. It's my Patreon supporters that help bring this podcast over to YouTube. And I could not do this without the support of my Patreon members. Patreon members also get different benefits based on the tiers that they sign up for. And one of them is getting this podcast episode delivered to them earlier than it is released to the general public. For more information, please go to scannerschool.com slash Patreon or check the link down below. So at this point, we've established we have one trunk radio system. We have one control channel. We have four voice frequencies. Again, we have total five frequencies and we have six talk groups. Again, we talked about the control channel, right? The control channel is what sends data out all the time. And I like to think of a trunk radio system as an orchestra. And the control channel is the conductor, right? The conductor is sitting there and he's basically telling everybody when to start playing and when to stop and how loud to be, et cetera, et cetera. The control channel, the conductor tells all the users when and where to go. And this is what our scanners listen to when they first get onto a trunk system to understand what talk groups are active and what voice frequencies to go to when that talk group becomes active. That conductor tells everybody what to do. Our scanners sit on that control channel and wait for the talk group to become active. The conductor, the control channel says, hey, talk group, you're gonna be assigned to this frequency. And we all go there. Our scanners follow the conductor's instructions and go to the frequency that the talk group is active on. Now, when that transmission is over, all the radios go back to the control channel and they wait for further instructions from the control channel or the conductor. The next unit keys up and the conductor says, okay, you need a voice channel, go over here. And the talk group goes over that voice channel. Of course, all the users of that talk group over there 
and our scanner, the passive device that's just listening on the system, again, we're a bunch of parasites or leeches here, we follow that instructions and go to that voice channel as well so that we can listen to the talk group that's in our scan list. So let's break it down with a real life example here. Say we're listening to the police dispatch talk group. The dispatcher needs to dispatch car 54 to a motor vehicle accident. So here's what happens. The dispatcher pushes the button on their console to key up on the dispatch talk group. As they key up behind the scenes, the radio says, hey, this is my talk group. I need to go to a voice channel. And the control channel says, okay, go to frequency number one. The radio goes to frequency number one and the control channel says, hey, this talk group is going over here. All of the radios that are monitoring that talk group hear that command and they go to frequency one. The dispatcher says what the dispatcher has to say, they de-key and all the radios come back to the control channel. Car 54 wants to respond. They key up their microphone and guess what? Same thing happens. Behind the scenes, the radio says, hey, I'm on this talk group. I'm car 54. I need a voice channel. The control channel, the conductor says, okay, go to frequency five, it's available. Everybody goes over to frequency five, including us, has a, again, a listener on the system. We hear the talk group on frequency five. And as soon as that transmission is over, we all go back to the control channel to wait for further instructions. Now, again, every time somebody on the police dispatch talk group keys up, you are moving around different voice channels. You might be on channel one, channel five, channel three, channel five, channel one, channel five, right? It all depends where you're being assigned to. But at the same time, the fire department gets a dispatch. They key up and they get a voice channel. As soon as they de-key, oh, wait a second, EMS is gonna get a run too. They can now reuse that empty voice channel that the fire department was once using. But as the fire department now has to keep again, they'll get another empty voice channel. So they're constantly hopping around on the four available voice channels as they become available. They're constantly being reused. It's a pool of resources for users to bounce around on. And because frequencies can be reused, we can start adding more and more talk groups onto the system. And yes, eventually we'll get to a point where we have too many users for the active frequencies, and you can start adding in more voice frequencies if you had to. Again, this, this happens on the admin side, not the scanner radio side. So we can add on to this trunk radio system, DPW or OEM or other agencies that maybe won't be too active on the system. But again, what happens if everybody decides they have to keep at once, right? Well, this is where we have priorities on talk groups on the trunk radio system. And there's also queuing of the trunk radio system. So our scanner doesn't have to worry about all that. All we are doing is listening to the control channel and waiting to find when the, the talk groups on our scan list are assigned a voice channel. And we're just following that information from the control channel. Let's break it down another way. Again, I love using the orchestra as an analogy for a trunk radio system. I think this really does a great way of painting a mental picture. So again, we've already outlined the control channel is the conductor and he stands in front of the orchestra, right? And an orchestra is made up of different sections. You can have woodwind, you can have uh, brass, you can have strings, you can have percussion, right? And think about all of these different groups of an orchestra as talk groups. And each individual instrument within each one of these groups is a radio out, at, out there, right? And when it's time for the strings to play something, all the string users play. They're all together in a group. And all of the woodwinds are a group. And all of the brass section is a group. When they all talk at one time, or they all keep at one time, right? It's, it's music. But if we listen hard enough, we can focus on just the woodwinds and hear them independently from the rest of the orchestra. Or we can hear the brass. Or maybe we can just focus in on the percussion. And we can listen to just what it is that we want to listen to as the conductor is saying, okay, it's time for the woodwinds to come up a little bit here and take a solo or take the lead or take a few bars for themselves, right? The orchestra is our trunk radio system. In a very basic nutshell, 
This is how a trunked radio system operates. Not as an orchestra, but again, it's a pool of frequencies, at least one being a control channel, the rest being for voice channels. And talk groups are the groups of users that bounce around the different voice channels as they become available. Yeah, they're not an orchestra, but that is really the best analogy I can come up with to, to kind of explain how different parts and different things move. And in a nutshell, this should give you a general understanding on how a trunk radio system works, that we have a site with frequencies that are a for a voice and also for data. And then we have talk groups that are a group of users and they bounce around on the voice channels because the control channel told them where to go and when to go. And also, if they're allowed to even be there. So the next video in this Scanner Radio University series is going to break down the different types of trunk systems. P25, EDAX, Motorola Type 2, NXDN, DMR, how they're all different, and how you have to program them into your Scanner Radio. So make sure that you're subscribed to this YouTube channel so you know when that video is published.